Burning Bridges, an Aliens fan fiction, written by Katherine Kruger, also known as Admiral Katz on fanfiction.net, at Sailing Bunny on Twitter, and The Sailing Rabbit on AVP Galaxy. Read by Katherine Kruger and edited by Donal Douglas. This story follows a different timeline to the current alien universe. Some characters have been changed to reflect this timeline. Chapter 10 2135. Waits awoke around three in the morning. He had a restless sleep. He could tell his body was struggling to adapt to such an irregular sleep schedule. Sighing, he sat up and rubbed his face. Every thought from earlier seemed to race back to the forefront of his mind all at once. That's it. I'm telling her. Waits got out of bed, throwing some clothes on. He could still feel remnants of sleep sticking to his brain, yet he felt like he wouldn't drift back off if he lay down. Rubbing his eyes, he threw on his jacket before peering out into the hall, hoping Ransom was sound asleep, wherever he was. He crept down the hall, glancing over his shoulder before knocking on Lingard's door. He had to knock several more times before hearing someone walk over to the door. Lingard threw open the door. What do you want, Ran- Oh, it's just you, Waits. She covered her face, sighing. What? I need to tell you something, Waits replied, feeling guilty that he had woken her. Can it wait till morning? No, I've been having trouble sleeping over it. I mean, if you don't want to talk, that's fine, but Lingard gestured for him to come in. All right, have a seat. What is it? His words became stuck. He began to rethink everything he had just thought about a few moments ago. I can't tell her this. About how I feel. I really can't. Does this make me a coward? He took a breath. I'm sorry. I, I know what I was going to say a minute ago, and now I'm not so sure. Lingard looked at the clock. Well, I have to be up in two hours anyway. May as well sit here and listen to you. Take your time. Take my time. I don't care. Everyone here can just barge in on my schedule and make it their own. Yeah, this really isn't important. I fucked up. I think that was inevitable. I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. You're sorry? Are you sorry for tonight? Or are you sorry for the last three weeks where you've just come and gone into my office whenever you damn well please? Either way, you're... I, I want you to stop. Stop visiting me. Stop sitting with me in the food court. Just stop. Am I allowed to ask why? Because you seem to think that you can just walk into my life and whatever's my business has to be yours too. We're not even that close. Plus, Ransom does the same thing. I'm not Ransom. Can I make that any fucking clearer? He's not your boyfriend, and he's not even a friend. He uses you to dig up dirt on people, and he's got dirt on you that he'll unleash if you don't do what he wants. I'm not that. Just yesterday, when you were upset over what happened in surgery, did anyone else have the balls to try and comfort you? Anyone? You just sat there being a smart ass. At least I sat there at all. You even asked me to just stay. Obviously, something has happened in the last several hours for you to forget that. Am I not trying hard enough? Is that the issue here? Trying hard enough to do what? Be as irritating as you can possibly be? To like you. There. I said it. That's why I woke you up. I'm sorry. It's been bothering me all night, so I had to come and say it now. Lingard fell silent, staring at him as she tried to process what she heard. That's all I wanted to say. I like you. I felt like you should know. I, I know we're both worried about Ransom finding out, but... There's a part of me that doesn't care. It's not even a big deal, and if he makes it a big deal, that's his problem, not ours. We both know it's only a matter of time before Sevastopol closes, and then we can go do whatever we want. We talked about this before. Relocating to Gateway, living a much better life than we're living now. How do I know this isn't going to end horribly? How do I know you're not going to lie to me? Have I ever done so in the last three weeks? Think about it. All I've ever done is try to care about you. Hell, yesterday, before I found out about the accident and surgery, I had gone down to the hospital to make sure you were taking a lunch break. I try to make sure you get some sleep. I've tried to just be a real friend to you. 
because I know what it's like to have no one. The only other person you trust is millions of miles away, and your relationship with them is a little strained. Everywhere you go, something about you turns everyone away. No matter how hard you try, they won't give you a fucking chance. So you quit and push everyone away because you think you don't need anyone, and that's just not true. Loneliness just eats away at you like the bitch it is. You just want one person to care, and sometimes you wonder why that's the hardest thing in the universe to get. It is the hardest thing in the universe to get. Yet, he's sitting right across from me. Tears began streaming down Lingard's face, and she put her arms around Waits' neck. I'm sorry. I think you've been living in fear for too long. No more, okay? I don't want you to be scared anymore. I mean, that is part of my job, making sure no one has to live in fear of anything. I promise, I swear on my life, I swear on my mother's Bible and my father's grave that I will make sure you never have to be worried about losing your job or your reputation. I know I'm not in a good position now, but if Hazleton gets thrown out when the inspector arrives, I will do whatever I can to deal with Ransom. No more cutting corners, no more blackmailing. I don't want you to feel like you have to sleep with him to get something you need. I don't know how long it'll take, but this will be fixed. Tightening her grip on weights, Lingard kissed his cheek. Thank you. I just want this to end. It will end. I already got a few things in mind. When Hazleton gets removed, and if I'm put in charge, the first thing we're going to do is tell Morley. Why? I have a gut feeling we can trust him. Plus, we need other people to know. Maybe he's seen things. Maybe he's been blackmailed himself. Either way, we need people on our side. I think we can trust him. I'm supposed to put my faith in a gut feeling you have. Yeah. Frankly, my gut's never been wrong. Aside from the time I went to this awful, awful diner at a town outside New Holland on LV-510. That's why my philosophy is, always trust your gut, unless it's empty. Lingard made a face. I'm guessing you had food poisoning? No, just they didn't drain the grease from half the shit on my plate. And to make it a bit worse, I made sure the chicken was hot, isn't spicy. Thought I could handle it, and I really couldn't. I didn't get a wink of sleep that night. Neither of us have gotten any winks of sleep tonight, that's for sure. Waits nodded. I really am sorry about waking you. I know I told you before that most of my experiences with meeting women haven't been the greatest, so I'm no charmer. I'm crude, rude, and brutally honest. The fact that you're okay with it kind of made me like you more. I didn't feel like I had to overhaul myself just to make you happy. Well, I guess I should come out and say that it didn't exactly go unnoticed that you turned to mush every time you're in my office. Lingard smiled. I hear some of the other residents talk about how you're stiff and angry and unpleasant to be around. Oh, but when you sit across from me at my desk, your icy heart melts and you become a big softy. Gee, a few minutes ago you were mad about me being in your office. It's three in the morning, and I was feeling all sorts of things at once. I'm sorry for getting upset with you. You really haven't done anything wrong, Waits. Honestly, I haven't had much luck with any sort of relationship, and I was afraid that you'd be no different than Ransom or my... Lingard paused, looking down at her lap, then looking back at Waits. Two ex-husbands? Two? What happened? Nothing really works out. I'm not ready to tell the full story, and I don't think we have time for me to go through both of them. And you never had children with either? And you never had children with either? Lingard fell silent again. The ticking of the clock was the only sound to be heard. I miscarried. I'm sorry. Honest to God, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry for even asking. It's been well over twenty years. I've mostly gotten over it, but I have moments where I wonder what could have been if I hadn't had that miscarriage. Would I have a little boy or a little girl trailing me around the station? Would I even be sent here if I had a child? Would my first husband have stayed loyal to me if that hadn't happened? If he was truly loyal to you, he wouldn't have left you after you miscarried. That was a shit move on his part. 
Lingard nodded. You're right, Waits. You didn't tell Ransom about this, did you? Again, Lingard looked down. This was before I knew what he was doing. I know he... he treats people like crap, but when I told him what happened, I saw genuine sorrow in his eyes. But you're well aware he can use this against you. I think even he would consider that too far. You're sure about that? I have been around him a lot longer than you have. He has his limits. Doesn't make him an angel, but he has his boundaries. I really do think he'd be less of a pain if Sevastopol wasn't in such bad condition. Regardless, he's going to spend a few years in jail for everything he's done, and I'm going to make sure of that. If he does use your past against you, I'll break every bone in his body and leave him for the medics to deal with. I don't think that'll happen. But I won't stop you if it came to it. Lingard drew her legs up, resting her chin on her knees. I do know that it's a little too late to have what I wanted twenty years ago. Kids? She nodded. It's a little late for me, too. Hopefully, in a few years, I'll be closer to home and able to see my nephew have kids. I don't think it's too late to fix my relationships with my own family. Hell, maybe my brother-in-law will be less of an ass toward me if you're around. Because you're a calming presence. You're probably one of the most gentle doctors I've ever had to work with. I mean, you didn't give me a hard time when I said I didn't want to piss in the cup in front of you. I'm gentle with all my patients unless the situation calls for something else. That's how I've always been. The conversation had trailed off. The clock marked 3.30. Waits ran his fingers through his hair, sighing. You know, this... This is one of the things I've wanted in a woman. Being willing to be up at an ungodly hour to just talk. All I ask is that you don't take advantage of my generosity in that department. Besides, you're the one who fusses about how much sleep I get. That's right. I know I already did, but again, I'm sorry for waking you up. No, it's okay. I was tossing and turning anyway. Something on your mind? Well, Lingard paused, then looked Waits in the eye. You... You were thinking about me? Yes. I guess, since you've already said it, I should say it as well. I like you too. I didn't know how to say it, when to say it, or even if I should. Because even though I had the feeling you felt the same way, I was afraid. Maybe you were just playing around, or teasing. Wade snorted. Teasing? I am so far past the age of teasing it's not even funny. Well, maybe a little bit. Out of boredom. I know if Ransom wasn't an issue, I'd, I'd be leaving you presents from a secret admirer. I'd mess with you. Just a little. Did you do this in any of your previous relationships? No. Because I never felt the way I do with you with any of them. Damn it, Waits, now you're making me blush. Waits kissed Lingard's forehead. That help? Not really. You just made it worse. <laughs> then I should do it again. You should go back to bed. I think we've said all we need to say in order to get some sleep for the next two hours. Have we? How about one more? Waits was silenced by Lingard swatting him with a pillow. You're lucky I'm off duty. That's an assault against a marshal. Yeah, because you could arrest me. Lingard grinned and kissed Waits's cheek. Back to bed with you. Good night, Waits. As life began to stir on Sevastopol that morning, Waits felt rejuvenated. He felt like he could take on the day, and didn't seem to care that he looked happy for once in front of other people. It actually scared the other marshals. Waits? Happy? Impossible. Even Hazelton gave Waits a confused look at the coffee machine. Is everything all right? Everything is just perfect, Waits replied. You seem... A bit peppier, that's all. Usually, you're not. Waits wasn't about to reveal his big secret. I had a full eight hours of sleep. Because you didn't threaten to urinate in my breakfast yesterday, so I didn't have to give you night duty. I'm actually proud of you. Hazelton turned his back, and Waits flipped him off. Go fuck yourself, he mouthed. The others breathed a heavy sigh of relief upon seeing Waits' more typical behavior. There were three days until the marshal inspector would arrive, and Waits was delighted to see the name of the inspector on Hazelton's desk, a recruit he mentored 25 years ago. 
and had served together on board the colonial transport Burgoyne when it was hijacked by pirates. Sammy Gerandino. Today you just can't get better, can it? I can trust Gerandino. He won't put up with Hazleton's or Ransom's bullshit, because I taught him. Waits headed down to the food court with an intense feeling of hope that things were going to right themselves real soon. He didn't hesitate to sneak up behind Lingard at one of the tables and grab her shoulders. Gotcha! Hey! What is wrong with you? Lingard whirled around to give him a dirty look. Good morning. How'd you sleep last night? You're kidding, right? Seriously, Waits, you can't act like this in public. I've got good news. I saw the name of the inspector. It's someone I mentored a long, long time ago. I know the guy. I could trust him. I think we'll have a case against Ransom rolling by the end of the week. Lingard smiled. That's great, Waits. She stood up to hug him. Oh, you're a lifesaver. I can't thank you enough. I know the guy is usually supposed to pay for dinner, but just this once, you pay as a thank you. Waits lowered his voice to a whisper, lips almost touching Lingard's ear. We'll meet at the grill we went to a couple nights ago. Sound good? Sounds good. I'm not paying for your drinks, though. Fair enough. They let go of each other. Waits realized they both just made a risky move, hugging in public. A part of him didn't care, yet he also knew there was a chance the inspection wouldn't go the way he was hoping it would go. He wasn't just afraid of what Ransom could do. He was afraid of letting Lingard down, of failing to do what he had promised. Once you make a promise like that, you can't go back on it. What am I going to do if everything backfires? Is it my fault if it does? Does that depend on what happens? After breakfast, Waits disappeared from the mall. He noticed the space flight terminals were practically deserted. No one was walking through, aside from him. He looked out the expansive windows to see the swirls of white and orange and bronze that covered nearby KG-348. Beyond that was the system star. Beyond that was the system star, providing the only natural light to Sevastopol. Waits had been on several orbital stations before. Sevastopol was one of the loneliest. Even a loner like him couldn't handle the emptiness. It could be worse, though, like the time he had been stuck on a processing and maintenance station over a battle between marines and a hostile species. The station had been evacuated. Waits was left behind. He went back to search every crevice of the station to make sure every civvy got out. There was no time to wait for him. The evacuated marshals knew he was alive. The marines wouldn't let them travel back because of the risk a hostile ship could attack so he had to wait for rescue by the marines. Waits was stranded for over a week, completely alone. There was plenty of food and water on the station, so he didn't have to worry about surviving. He just had to worry about his mind. He was jolted from his thoughts when he noticed someone else's reflection approaching him from behind. Marshal, Morley said, pulling a pack of cigarettes from his pocket. He felt silent as he searched for his lighter, then slid the pack away as he flipped the lighter on. Care for a smoke? Sure, thanks. Waits took the offered cigarette. What the hell are you doing all the way out here in the terminals, Doc? Morley held out his lighter. Some peace and quiet. It's a little creepy when the hospital's quiet, so I make the trip out here. The space flight terminals at least symbolize that there's life beyond Sevastopol. True. Makes things feel a little less empty. Morley nodded, taking his cigarette out of his mouth. He was quiet for a moment, then glanced at Waits. I've noticed you and Lingard. What's the right word? You've been getting closer the last few days. You could say that. Waits exhaled. Really plunged into her work and purposefully doesn't make time for anything. It's nice to see her light up whenever you're around. Or even just mentioned. Waits paused. Really? Yes. You should see her eyes when someone just casually mentions they saw you, or when you send a message saying you're coming to San Cristobal. She seems so worn out all the time, and it's just nice to see you make her happy. Well, she makes me happy, too. Waits looked over his shoulder. In fact, last night, we kind of talked about that, and ended up saying that... He lowered his voice. We like each other. Morley smiled. Your secret's safe with me. She never looked so happy whenever Ransom dropped by. You knew about them being... together? Now Morley lowered his voice. There is a lot I know about their relationship, Marshall. I went into the hospital one morning and found one of the computers had been locked. 
I have to find a device to reopen it. What do I find? Messages from Ransom to Lingard about getting medical records on people he isn't fond of. Common sense would tell you he wants things to use as blackmail, all while threatening Lingard in the process. She hasn't said a word to me about it, and I can understand why. She's told me about that. I promised I'd do something about it if Hazleton gets kicked out and I'm put in his place. He will fuck with the inspection coming up, that's for sure. Well, I know the guy they're sending. Hopefully that's a good thing. For your sake, I hope so too. Morley gazed out the window. And we're all hoping the station is decommissioned quickly. Waits nodded. I can't really handle hypersleep anymore. Here to Gateway would be my last trip I'll ever have to do. Everyone's talking about moving to Gateway. Well, almost everyone. Lingard has. I have. Not really sure what Kuhlman's doing. He's been really upset about being here, but we can't find another psychologist to come out here, so he has to stay. That's a shame. It is. I've actually been trying to take in some of his patients myself, even though I'm only a general practitioner. All depends on whether my schedule will allow it or not. Morley blew out a breath of smoke. Some of them don't really need the pills. They just need someone to talk to. We all do. How about you, Doc? You need someone to talk to? I've been doing all right. I write. I leave the hospital when I can. I gotta ask, where the hell did you get these cigarettes? They're way too good to be the cheap shit in the mall. Traveling merchants. One of them I'm friends with. He's the one with the good smokes and candy and other little things that remind people of home. He's not selling dirty magazines, is he? No, not at all. Guns? Ammunition, but no actual weapons. I think his next scheduled stop here is the week after the inspection. Feel free to stop by when he comes. He's always happy to have new customers. I'll give it some thought. I know my job will be to check his license when he comes by. I had a lot of funny experiences with space merchants. I can promise you he's honest and doesn't have any contraband. I wouldn't give him too hard a time. For you, I'll be nice. Waits grinned a little, but not too nice. I appreciate it. Morley returned the smile. Perhaps we should go to one of the bars and talk over drinks some night. Well, we can't do it tonight. Got a... a, a meeting with Lingard. There was a twinkle in Morley's eye. His smile widened. A date? I guess we can call it a date. Where are you meeting her? The grill downstairs. Then it's definitely a date. She's paying, though. She wanted to know how to thank me for being on her side when it comes to ransom, and I said, pay for dinner tonight. Still a date. Morley laughed. Come on, waits. Even on a dismal little place like this, there's hope. There's happiness. There's love. Embrace it. Live your life to its fullest. You have a shot at happiness and love. Grab it and don't let go.